Hello and welcome to the Eco Park Stadium for the Development Red versus Development Blue. I'm delighted to be joined in a commentary box by Will Biggs. Will, welcome. Thanks very much, Mark. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this game. It's going to be a competitive fixture. The rain stopped and the, the lads look like they're up for it. Absolutely, Biggs. Biggsy, I'll, Biggsy, I'll call you Biggsy throughout. Not problem, Mark. Will, so we've got the Development Red versus Development Blue. Tell me how this game comes about. A select 11 from uh, a mixture of the second team and the development lads. Uh, lads who've obviously worked hard this year, shown what they can do in the classroom and, and obviously during training. So it should be a good good matchup. We've got Courtney against Kyle, which again is a, a big head-to-head, -head, both eager to, to win. So looking forward to it. Absolutely. And the man in the middle is none other than Ben Thompson, experienced referee. Yeah, Ben no, uh, needs no introduction. Uh, qualified referee. Refereed many big games, uh, a big friend of, uh, of Daz England as well, Premier League referee, so I'm sure he's looking to, to emulate one of his performances on the pitch today. Absolutely, I'm sure that's where he got that sprightly uh, well, he Nike. Normal. He does, he looks like a referee, to be fair to him. And he has got all the gear, and he has got a bit of idea. So we're shortly going to be kicking off, Will. Yeah. There's a couple of players I'm looking forward to seeing today. Um, it's a, a match-up in goal. The, the Row brothers, we've got Aaron, um, who's a, an experienced third year with us now, studying on the BTEC level three, and we've got Ryan Rowe um, in the other goal, uh, one of our level two students as well, so yeah, it could be uh, an awkward ride home if it's, it's not a nil-nil. Absolutely, and thankfully they live quite quite close uh, to the Eco Park Stadium, but certainly there will be banter thrown about for one of the teams who, um, who win, and the other will unfortunately be on the end. Of the beating, so we've got development. Are the development blue in the in the the Go black away versus home, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we're off. We've got Harley Rolf playing it through. Nice hold up play. Liam Raz with the tackle. Nice steady possession in midfield. Falls loose. And the away team go away with it. Harley Rolf through the middle. Cody couldn't pick up the ball, plays it out wide. Nice through ball. Have they got runners in front? Takes it down to the far side. Broken up. And we have a throw in it to the away team. Well, you've played in many big games as a goalkeeper. A running theme here, Ben, obviously a goalkeeper. Well, you're a goalkeeper. How are the lads feeling today? Yeah, it's a, it's a big occasion for everybody and um, I think the first few minutes are a big indicator of how the game will go. Nerves can certainly play a part. Obviously, we've seen in some of the games earlier, if one team goes ahead, that can set the, set the stall out for the rest of the game. So I think the lads will look to, to get a foothold in the game and we'll probably see patterns of play emerge from there. Um, what an opportunity for these lads to play on the first team pitch. Play on grass, which a lot of the lads might not be accustomed yeah, we've to. Got a, we've got a breakaway here. Mark, oh, we're through. The away team out on the left-hand side. Holds up the ball. Needs runners. Oh, great turn. He's entering the box now. Great ball across. Oh, it flashes across the front. A good goal, and the home team get away with it. Just a bit of gamble needed there, Will. Yeah, uh, they had enough players in the box, but yeah, no one could find the, the end of that cross. Great start from the away team, who've looked uh, the brighter of the two teams so far. Aaron Rowe able to put his physical stamp and maybe, just maybe the corner of the, the striker's eye seen that and it being a, uh, a deterrent to him as he kicks off from the south stand. Good kick over the halfway line in the... Lucy midfield, good. And through ball. Nathan's onto it. And clears it away for an away team throw in. So will a combination of both so the development lads have opportunities to play throughout the season. Yeah. They've had a couple of couple of fixtures, more than a couple of fixtures. It's been a mixed season to be honest, Mark. Uh, Kyle and myself have, uh, have overseen the development team this year and uh, we've had some great victories, um, also matching up against the second team on occasions and, and been more than impressive. Uh, more than impressive, I say, with uh, some performances which have led to some development players playing for the seconds and then even progressing into the first team. So, yeah, there's been some great opportunities to, to showcase their abilities and this is obviously one of those opportunities that 
everyone looks forward to at the end of the season. Yeah, and we talked about it in the the oh the handball there. It the looks like a bit of basketballage. Uh, the referee Ben Thompson. They're looking a bit a bit narrow. The home team at the moment, Mark. Not yeah. Width, especially on the left hand side. Probably from the six yard box out to the the touchline. There's not a lot of people yeah. out there on the left hand side. Just in uh, some formations, I'd say. Obviously, very tactically astute, but. Yeah, maybe a couple of alterations. Here we go. Mike Thompson down the wing. Plays it inside. James Carter with the tackle. Ethan oh, McGee with nice. a bit of trickery. He takes it into the box. And a loose ball. Cameron Wall comes away with it. Good attacking play down the right hand side. All the home team are away. Here we go. All oh, loose touch. Can Max Roberts get onto it? No. Takes it into the box. One touch. Boothie, great tackle. Callum Forster there with the big legs to block the tackle. That was a goal winning clearance. Yeah. Uh, Will, Lee Booth. Five, if he was 6 foot 4, that was probably him. Lee Booth looked, uh, looked to have scored, uh, but uh, the big man was able to get the block in. Here we go. Oh, what a turn. It's Dennis Bergkamp-esque. What a strike, it hits the post and Aaron Rowe with the great save to get it away, clawed it. Unbelievable, Will, from one end to the other. Here we go, now the home team have the ball. Oh, loose touch inside. And the away team have control, Harvey Rolf dictating play. Oh. Oh, nice play. Could he get caught here, Cody Curran with the ball. Now the home team are away. Great crossfield ball. Touch inside the box. He looks for options. A little bit slow there for me, Mark. Yeah, not a lot, not of um, not a lot of options. So he spent a bit of time looking around to see what was on. There wasn't much there, and it did slow slow it down, like you say. Well, yeah. Started off with a great pace of the game, but starting to find uh, find uh, some different tactical options and. Uh, we have the away team moving forward now. Sometimes as a winger you just want to get your head up and see your mate and play it into him. I think that's the thing. The longer you're on the ball, it gives the defenders time to regroup, get back into position and, and the options are gone. James Carter with the clearance. Oh, it's loose in midfield. Home team are away with it. It's a great searching ball. Is he in behind? Lee Booth. Oh, he's got the option to cut it across. He's just he dragged it wide. Two minds almost, Will. I think he's got to cut it across there. Easy tap in at the back stick. Not a bad effort, but they're the kind of things that can change the game, especially this early on. He looked like he shaped up to have a shot, but then maybe at the last minute decided to cross to his mate. Yeah, Didier dragged with it. Didier dragged with it past the post. Maybe just take a little bit off it, and, uh, and we'll be looking at the first goal of the game. But currently, Will, it's nil-nil. Yeah. Goal kick, lovely flick on. Ball's loose. Ben Barton. And it's cleared in midfield. Cody Curran with a lovely ball in behind. That's nice. Look at the gaps here that are a bit emerging. Max Roberts comes to cover. Great header. Ooh, again, just flashes wide. Yeah, getting them behind here. A little bit of a gap in behind for runners to run into yeah, exploit the space certainly causes some uh, some problems up top but still to find that golden touch which would set this game off Will we've got a visitor Craig Collins oh. Craigie Gaffer talk us through how are you feeling great performance from the lads from the start right until the finish yeah really buzzing for the lads I mean they've worked hard all season and to get a win here on you know on the eco power pitch it just it just kind of tops things off really well um, and again for them second years it's one of their moments to you know to to remember sort of thing so yeah just absolutely buzzing for them yeah. um, what would you say sort of uh, set you off on the right tone was it the early goal was it the warm up what, what do you think set up such a a great first half really which hold on we've got a chance here Mark oh yeah but and the away team just clear it sorry Craig yeah, so what sort of set you off for that great performance today? 
I think from the off, I mean, even in the change room, I was, you know, I was to the boys, I was saying, look, this is our stadium, this is our pitch, you know, although it's, you know, it's a, a good event, you know, we want to win, we want to be competitive. And I think that mentality crossed over onto onto the pitch after they crossed over the white line. And, and again, like you said, Will, that early goal kind of really made a difference. Yeah, Mason was uh, on fire that first 10 minutes, maybe could have had a hat trick. Rio obviously set him up for that later on in the game, but oh, we've got a goal here, what a finish. Club Doncaster Sports College 11, home team with the first goal. Great finish. It, it looked like John Collingworth, it, it definitely was. Finds the bottom corner past Ryan Rowe, who uh, has had a great, good start to the game, but here we are, 1 0, and uh, the pressure's on uh, Courtney Sterling to. The, the, the rally is, is troops, yeah, it was a, a great finish, a lovely turn, uh, and, and a great finish on the left foot by, by John Collingworth. Craigie, what struck me was just the, the endeavour to score goals, Mace, uh, Rio, uh, Adam Morrison, it wasn't just the, the one-man band kind of thing, it was everyone wanted to contribute, as well as being at the back as well. Uh, I, I thought Gibbo, uh, Ewan, Griff were all brilliant at the back. Full team performance. Yeah, absolutely. F uh, to a man, and even the lads who came on at half time, I made I made five changes at half time to freshen things up a little bit. But the formation we play, you know, kind of playing that five three two with the wing backs being able to drop in to defend, but also to push up really high in advance areas when we've got the ball. And I think that ultimately, you know, he set us on a really good front foot. And like you said, Mark, that eye for goal and that and that ruthlessness is something we've had all season. The thing I'm most disappointed about is not getting the clean sheet, and that's kind of something that I said at half time. That was that was the thing. Obviously, going so far ahead in the first half, it's easy to take the foot off the gas. Um, very close to getting that clean sheet in the end, but. Um, yeah, you can't be disappointed with the performance overall. No, absolutely not. I mean, at the back, like you mentioned, Mark, earlier on, and, and you know, Gibbo, for me, was man of the match. He, he won all of his headers and, and didn't make you know many mistakes at all. Uh, but, yeah, eight minutes to go to, to concede is, is a bit is a bit gutting. But on the grand scheme of things, we scored a hat full of goals and, and we got the win and won the trophy for this, this year against DN College Group. So, yeah, really happy about that. Yeah, and we mentioned in commentary where one were conceded, I could see that you were you were annoyed and devastated, but I could also see the lads were annoyed and devastated, and and had a quick response straight away, and that just kind of reinforces the team spirit and and desire to just get better and better that you have and want to strive for that perfection. Yeah, hundred percent, and and we're, we always set them high standards, and I think we have done from from throughout, you know, from the start of the season, you know, we, we've looked at that, and and that's something that you know through the analysis, through working together, through the training, it's something that you know, even if we do go down or we get has, it's not one of them where we get on at each other. It's right, okay, everyone's going to make a mistake, but it's how you react after that mistake, and that's what we really you know worked on over the year. And and yeah, sort of lastly, you talked about that. That team, so Chris with it as analysis, you got Ethan there alongside you, and then yourself as a manager wanting to really rubber stamp and imprint your way of playing. So it's not just, you know, done by chance, it's done from groundwork and your analysis sessions on Monday nights and watching videos and well, putting things in the practice. We could have a goal here. Big save from uh, Aaron Rowe, it's cleared just out to the right hand side. Can great, back? great save. Yeah, strong hands into the right areas. But they've still got possession for the U18. Finds a searching ball out to the left hand side. Touch from Harvey Roll for his right foot. Can he swing it? He had a go. Easily claimed by Aaron Rowe. Uh, Craig, bringing your attention to this game, is there any performers that you're looking for potentially for next year that could progress up to uh, the first team? In Anyone that you've got your eye on? Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's, a, there's been a couple of them that have been in and, a, in and around it. So Harley Rolf has had a couple of games uh, with me and, and featured. Uh, and again, I think he's someone who could really kind of sit in front of that kind of defence and, and kind of marshal that and act as that kind of brick wall before... Um, before the defences kind of breached and stuff so he's definitely one that uh, I would look towards especially moving towards next year on the 
uh, on Courtney's team. On the opposite team, uh, you've got a couple of there. So uh, Ryan Henshaw in the middle again, looking in that mould of an Adam Morrison type of player to yeah, to act well, in yeah. yeah to act in that kind of advanced areas where he can pick up them pockets, play as that number ten and get us moving forward. Uh, another player who started with me, who dropped off a little bit, was Kenzie Messon as well, out on the um, out on the right, I believe there, or he might might be playing up front. He's another one that you know I want to try and get my arm around and and, and mould and, and get us into the first team for next year as well. Yeah, there's been some uh, some encouraging performances from some of the lads so far, but it is still the home team that's leading. They've got a corner here. Swings it in. Van Rowe gets a touch. Is it cleared? No. Blocked from the away team. It's still in the area. We get hold of it. Oh, slight slip on the wet surface. And they retain possession with Liam Rouse. Ben Barton. The ball. Searching ball. Alan Forster again gets the tackle in. And they look to break away. James Carter plays it out wide. Plenty of room here for Henshaw to step into. Alan Forster's there again. We talked a bit about the fact that it's really a, it's a... Oh, here we've got a goal here. We've got a chance. Like oh, we've got an offside. Yeah, we talked about that for a lot of these lads, it's a two-year cycle. So they'll do two years with us. So maybe, hopefully, they get two years of varsity. But then once they become the year 13 and the Leafs, you've got to, the year 12s become then the key players in the year 13. Yeah, I mean that's something that this year we've we've tried to introduce. I mean we've had a lot of second years in the in the first team. We've probably had three kind of mainstays from the you know first years who will progress to second years. And I'm hoping we've got one or two that are out here today that will hopefully form that you know group next year. But we're hopefully looking for some new students that are going to come in and really impress in pre-season to to bolster both of the teams and have a really good go at the CFA League next year. Yeah, it was such a close season and obviously just missed out on the title is that something you're looking to to go one step further next year with? oh absolutely you you want to be competing at that end of the table and you want to be involved in them conversations and that's why you get involved in football and and that's the reason why all the you know the, all the lads put the 100 percent effort in and they turn up to training and, and you know days like today hopefully reward them sort of things as well you know even though we finished second we've been able to lift the trophy here today yeah that's something that, again memories to look back on as well as the season but lifting trophies in in a stadium like this is something you can always look back on and think uh, very proudly on. And uh, we've just been joined by another member of, uh, of staff here, Mark. Absolutely. Another one of the, the um, coaching gurus. I'm sure he's got a keen eye on some of these players here after after coaching the second team so so well this year. We've got Nathan Foley up in the, the gantry. Nath, welcome. Hi guys, how are you doing? You good? Indeed. Yeah, indeed. We're, um, oh, was it just... Seen Lee Booth just whistle one over the keeper's left hand side. So Nath, you are the 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 cut two uh, coach alongside Courtney. Got an eye on a couple of these lads moving forward into next year. Hundred percent, and it's something that come the back end of, of the regular season we we did try to implement in in bringing some bringing some students students through um, in terms of the. Uh, uh, those that were kind of on the fringe of the development and the seconds and they perform really well and I'm looking forward to, to them kind of going away over the summer and, and as we see between year 12 and 13 there is some fantastic opportunity there is some there is some uh, mental maturation that, that goes on uh, naturally and you find that they come into year 13 with, with a lot um, more focused heads and, and it's good to has a good impact on the first years coming through the year 12. So no, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing the guys today and and how they how they get involved on on a pitch of such quality. Yeah, is there any players that on the second team this year that have stood out for you, Nathan? Yeah, um, Harley Rolf uh, and Ryan Henshaw. Harley's playing today. Ryan's not. Um, we've had Kenzie play the back part of the season, who's been absolutely phenomenal and and given us a bit of buzz and energy. But my shout goes out to to the players that, uh, in one particular, um, Kieran Edson, who has been um, for some part of the season on the fringe of the squad and in recent weeks really broke in there. Uh, but that comes through the training uh, and dedication that is given to them, them cold November, December 
training sessions and he, he's never given up when, when he's looked up and not seen his name on the team sheet and um, 100% he's been rewarded with the varsity opportunity today and he also went on to captain the, the Cat 2 team in his final final competitive league game for the college. Yeah, that's really uh, impressive to see someone who comes in maybe lacking in confidence by the end of the second year he's captaining teams I've seen him coaching and he's really sort of improved not only in the classroom but on the pitch and hopefully next year we can see him continue that progression with coaching well, and we've got a chance to see Harley roll from the box and Aaron Rowe gets to say good hands there from the keeper great height for the goalkeeper Will yeah. yeah going back to the game I think the, the away team started to break in and Sort of break through midfield a little bit now. Got a few chances and shots off, hit the post, but uh, still one behind. Home team have a ball in here. Is it clear? And it's a corner ball, Ben Thompson says. Experienced referee. Shouts for handball. He says no. He's strong with it and it's a corner ball. I think when it's more of a ball to hand, uh, instance like that, yeah, he's not going to do it. Maybe if we're in the Prem, it goes to VAR, but uh, not on this occasion. And Thompson knows what he's talking about. He does, he's a very experienced referee. Also runs the coaching clinic here as well. The refereeing clinic, should I say. I can hear shouts from Courtney Sterling, get it out, and they're on the breakaway. Oh, what a tackle that is from Liam Rouse. Strong, assertive with the ball. He looks like he's taking a knock. And the away team clear. Put, put his body on the line there, Will. Uh, a, a great tackle, but it looks like he's, he's caused himself a bit of damage to the yeah. to the left shoulder. He likes his martial arts and maybe he's, uh, he's taking a kung fu kick there, but great tackle and uh, and there's a slight break in play for the lads to get a well-earned rest, get some water on board, hopefully uh, keep the high energy up for the, the next bit. Echo Park, but as, as Liam Rouse gets a, a <laughs> thank you, Will, a rousing applause uh, for his efforts, walking off in a sling to protect that right arm. Uh, some fantastic bit of slingage. Yeah, the um, tackle, and uh, he looks like he's okay. The medical staff have seen to him, and uh, it looks like his race is run, and he'll be cheering his team on from the sidelines. Absolutely. So we're just about to start back play, Will. No idea of time. No. no idea of how long's left. One nil to it the doesn't matter. team at the moment. We've played around 24 minutes. Absolutely. So around around 10, give or take, added time for the first half. Been informed by Chris, yep, 24 minutes. What a fantastic job he's done uh, videoing these three games and throughout the season yeah, as the, really the head of analysis. Hold on, we've got a chance in. He's in behind. Oh, and just trickled into the right road and a massive chance for the home team to take it to 2-0. Yeah, well, I think sometimes when there's an injury and a team's got momentum and a bit of uh, being on top, sometimes an injury can slow that yeah. down. Hold on, Lee Booth in, takes a strike and he's oh. found the bottom corner. Great finish, side-footed into the right-hand side of Ryan Rowe's goal, 2-0 to Kyle Croft's Red and White Army. Absolutely. Well, and I think sometimes you say about the commentator's curse. I think this is the opposite. <laughs> we we said about you know the 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 home team, the Red and Whites, lost a player, maybe lost a bit of momentum, and then Lee Booth pops up with a second for his team. Yeah, he's a great finisher to be honest, Mark. He's played for the development team this year, had options and opportunities with the second team, but whenever he's he's in front of goal, he's calm, collected, and generally using the side of his foot, finds the bottom or top corners, and it was no different here today on the Eco Power Stadium. Oh, searching ball. Aaron Rowe there to clean up. Throws it out. Oh, it looked like a handball there, was it? No. Callum Forster slides in. Great ball out wide. He's the late runners into the box. Ball across for the goal. Max Roberts clears it. Could have gone anywhere. It goes out for a red and white goal at the corner even. Absolutely. If you're um, if you're Carl Croft here, uh, coach of the the red and whites, you've got to be happy with 2 0 up. Yeah, I think they started off maybe the uh, the cager of the two, but they've found the foot in the in the game so far. That first goal certainly settled them down, and now they're looking to 
to solidify that, that position with this corner here. Looks like, jo is that John Collingworth going to swing it in with the left foot? Yeah, it looks like an outswinger. One arm up, I'm not sure he knows what that means. Underneath the post, oh, Max Roberts hits his back. Oh, it's in the box. Can we get it clear? Searching feet. Great header from Ben and it's a great save from Ryan Rowe. Spreads himself, Michael S. And it's another corner for the red and white. Fantastic bit of play from, from everybody there, really. Uh, ben Barton getting his head in there. And uh, an Aaron Rowe pulling off a, a brilliant save. Now, Courtney Sterling, uh, manager of the away team, we'll call them. Oh, yeah. Has uh, oh, um, sent his subs out to get warmed up as Kieran Etchen looks to keep the ball alive with Cody Curran. Nice. Hangs it up. Callum Forster's there again. Played well so far, Callum Forster. James Carr plays it out wide. Retained possession. Great searching ball. Oh, Ryan Rowe. Is he on to the seconds? Callum Forster clears. No nonsense there. Sometimes you've just got to bail your goalkeeper out there. Will. A few corners here applying the pressure. And the away team look like they, uh, they need a break in play just to, to stagger this onslaught from the red and white. If you're Courtney, what are you saying to the lads here? I think it's difficult. I think, like I said, the first 10 minutes they were, they were finding their feet. They're making uh, some consecutive passes and they've just gone away from that. I think they just need to obviously clear the lines from this corner and then get back to the possession pace again and uh, they start to get some, some touches on the ball in the opposition's half. They're under the cosh again here. Max Roberts clears and the skipper calls it his ball, but it's a home throw in. We reckon we've we'll got about five minutes left, Chris, you think? And then around that? Yeah, I think uh, we're going towards the later stage. 15 the minutes. Half. I think <laughs> the away team could do with uh, maybe just getting one back so they've got that that one goal deficit to, to fill in the second half. But here they are with the ball and they retain possession. Goes out wide. Balls of touch and go. Here we go. Better passing possession from the, the away side. They've got the ball up top now. Tyler plays it through. And then keep it in. Yes, he takes on his man, puts it inside. Can he swing it? Retains possession inside. Shots away. Blocked. And Callum Forster's up there to retain possession. Can he dig it out? He cuts inside. Cuts inside again, wriggles his way into the box. Has it gone out? Ben Thompson says yes, it's a goal kick to the home side. Ethan McGee just cut inside on the right hand side and he looked like he's about to just unleash that left foot. And he Put did. He did a bit of a righty lefty, yeah. uh, which kind of put him off, but he managed to recycle it. Yeah, I think they need to light the shackles off a little bit here, get some shots off, test the keeper a little bit more, because uh, they've not really been in the opposition's half, so they need to make it count in the arm, up there inside the box, get the shots away. Psychologically, well, it makes a big difference going in 2-1, as opposed to 2-0. I think especially if it's just before the half-time whistle, it sort of picks the lads up. You've got something to, to aim for in the second half and they're, they're sort of starting to turn the screw a little bit in the second at the, the away team here. More possession inside the half. A couple of shots off and maybe that could help them in the second half in terms of motivation. Here they are. Well. It's still in. They've hung a ball up. And the referee calls a, a goal kick. So Will been here what five years now? Five years, yeah. Five years. Your role with the um, level twos and the, and the two point five. So the gym instructing and the personal training yeah, course. Yeah, I teach a few of these lads. They're currently working towards completing their level three personal training qualification in the next coming weeks. Um, been working hard in the gym, and you can you can see some of that uh, on the pitch today with uh, their running and, and strength on the ball. So, yeah, been here for five years now. Oh, hold on, we got a chance here. Lee Booth stumbles his way from the box. <laughs> he does again. Great finish, and that makes it three 0 to the home side. Lovely finish. Yeah, once again, one is in front of goal, calm, collected, 
and he finds that bottom corner once again. I think, I think all too often, you, you get like that and you try to knock the panels off it. You try to snatch at it, but you just coolly slot it in. Yeah, we've seen that in some of the games earlier. In front of goal, sometimes the best strikers are those who just take the time, are cool, calm, and uh, hit the target. Sometimes it's easy to just thrash at it. You can go anywhere, but no. Lee Booth there finds the bottom corner, and that makes his uh, that makes a brace for him today. Can he make it into a hat trick? Here they come again, the home side. Oh, he looks offside. He was great call from the linesman there. Just plays on the shoulder, Lee Booth there. Very uh, fast in behind, but he was too too eager there. That's it. Sometimes you just gotta hold your run a little bit. When you've got that speed, you don't necessarily have to be right on the centre half. You, you can almost give him a, a a yard or two, but get him behind him, which he's gonna do again. Yeah, here he is. What a Lovely touch, touch that. Callum forced a recovery tackle. Can he prevent the corner? He does. Plays his lines very well with the left foot. Was like a Robin van Persie takedown almost? That was, that was eloquent. Just going to talk about one of the substitutions there. So, hold on. Red and white. Find the way into the box. Great block from, Mac, block from Max Roberts there. Put my teeth in for it. Yeah, so we've had Liam Wood come on for the, uh, the away side here, the number nine. Uh, tall striker. Maybe the, uh, the tactics from Courtney are to hit it up to the big man. Play off him here. An extremely popular... And, and hard-working and charismatic student. Great lad, yeah. I have him on the level two mark. Craig and I have had him for the last couple of years. And, uh, yeah, very nice young man. Been working really hard, not only in his, his sport lessons, but for his English and maths, and we're hopeful that he'll, uh, he'll get his ball this year. It, it would say it epitomises everything of a student out of the Will Biggs and Craig Collins stable. As Ethan McGee, Ethan McGee looks to get him behind... Just slightly overhit on what is probably still a little bit damp on surface. Yeah, Will. It makes for a great passing game, but at times when you just need it to slow down for you in situations like that, it runs away and uh, the legs are gone. Ryan Rowe clears. It's not quite made it to the edge of the box. Red Rain regain possession. Callum Forster once again. Although uh, they are behind, Callum Forster at the back for the, the away side for the standout form He has indeed, yeah, alongside uh, Max Roberts on that. Yeah. that uh, I've just seen, yeah, he's just on the sort of left hand side. Yeah. They have had a little bit of joy, the, the home team, but certainly um, they've done well to and there's another clearance there. Liam Wood extinguish any. He's using his pace, he's got him behind Ben. Just about clears his lines. Is he going to go out for a throw in? Just. Yes, it will. He could have gambled a little bit more. I thought Liam. that was an opportunity where the ball was almost perfectly weighted to use his speed in behind, but no, Ben just gets his body across, just about does enough. Full credit to the centre half. Sometimes you just got to just be a presence, just put them off as yeah, a poster. Use, use your strength. If, uh, if the striker's coming in behind, get your body across. If you're in front of the ball, he's going to have to uh, kind of seriously put up a challenge to get you off that ball, and he did well there. Going back to Max Roberts, Mark. Uh, yes. Another student who's, who's shown great um, progression with us. Started on the Level 2 programme, now studying on the, the MeTech Level 3, and looks to progress onto the higher education courses next year as well. Yeah, absolutely. He, um, so, yeah, like you said, Max was a... So he's done his level 2 gym instructor, then his P2 course. He's got his, um, he's building up his UCAS points that he can then take the university. So Max is looking at doing his fourth year with us at the college and our partners with the university campus, uh, Doncaster, in order to do a P and coaching degree. So again, just one of the many success stories of what happens when you put the work in and dedicate yourself. Yeah, another great lad who, again, Shows up, works hard, and um, not only in the classroom. Oh, flash pass! Across the goal there, George Spout with the header. Yeah, putting the effort in in the classroom and out on the pitch, and entering his fourth year potentially next year. 
going to leave Club Doncaster with a, a degree, which is, is great to see. Absolutely, and you look back to people like Ethan Hargreaves here doing the, uh, the referee's assistant. Two years on a BTEC, three years on the degree programme, doing his, his postgraduate certificate of education, his sixth year. And uh, on his way to becoming a... He, he just loves it that much, Will. Uh, he's... Part of the... Part of the furniture. Yeah, we've got a couple of those. We've got Carl Croft in the dugout. We've got Emily Medlock through again. Just progressed from the BTEC level three onto the degree. PGC and, and now a uh, fully fledged member of staff and Cal Croft, a manager of the, the winning team at the moment here as well. Now on his way to winning on the on the the, the keep moat no sorry the Eco Par Stadium. Get it right, please, Mark. Get it right here at Bellevue. <laughs> Slight of delay in play, red time of throwing. And we're waiting for a There's a great opportunity to switch it here. Just about breaks down in midfield. And Ryan Enshaw has possession. Great ball. Can he get back onto it? Here he is, searching for the next pass. Here he goes, puts inside. Can he unleash a shot? Goes with the outside of the foot. Ryan Rowe gets down and it just squirms away for a corner ball. Love that. Will, so the development have had a, a couple of really good games. Talk us through. I know you were you were involved as well. The development and, and you know there's many teams come down. Any sort of highlights, standout moments? Yeah, there's been a few. I think some of the goals I've seen have been ridiculous. Hold on, we got a chance. Oh, oh on the volley there. Is this what you want from the centre half? Yeah. Sometimes it's it's not always the bullet headers. It's a volley from the about ten yards, and it just flashes wide of the post. Yeah, going back to the uh, the games, Mark. We've seen a, a few goals in the development games this year, which have really impressed me. One standout, again, we've talked about him so far, Liam Wood, I can remember it, on the, the Astro, with the outside of his foot, he found the top corner, and I believe he got a brace that day. Here Incredible. he is on the ball, actually. Cuts inside, right foot. He finds a pass, edge of the box. It's a bundle, he's... Game possession. James Carr with the tackle. The away team come away with it. Edge of the box. Can they find a gap? It's very congested in there. It's a sliding tackle from Cody Curran. Shots away. Great oh, save. Oh, Ethan McGee did incredibly well there. One-handed Aaron Rowe, top corner. Three men. Will, from the goalkeeper in perspective. Great save. Yeah, he'll be happy with that. Big Donny Rovers fan, Aaron. And uh, he's not seen many Donny keepers make them saves this year. And he'll be happy he's done so here on the Eco Power. Fantastic. Ethan McGee, great, great trickery. He looked as if maybe the chance had gone begging. Managed to bring it back onto uh, onto his favourite foot. A uh -uh. few gaps there. He found found the slightest opportunity, got the shot away, and it unleashed a great strike, great save from Aaron Rowe. Away team here with the in swinging corner. Oh, just that's a hand baller. Maybe put it in his pocket. Break on here, Will. They've got a man over, Cody Curran chooses not to overlap. Good defending. That Thomas Lindy holding it up well. Yeah. Oh, oh, skill, edge in the village. And he cuts it inside. Can he get the strike off? He's inside the six. And Ryan Rowe comes away with it. Great opportunity there from the opposition's attacking corner. Breakaway, Leicester City style. And we have another opportunity here. Liam Wood in behind uses his, his pace, but... Ben Barton's there again to clear. I've been very impressed by Ben Barton. Yeah, for what he lacks in pace, he has done very well with his positioning. He's marshalling that defence very well. Absolutely, and that's key. Him and James Carter have um, have, have done well to uh, nullify and neutralise the attack of the uh, the away team here. Will? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been encouraging the last ten minutes from the away side. More of the ball, a couple of chances. Like we've just seen there, potentially balls over the top could be the, uh, the plan moving forward. Just as the half-time whistle goes, Will. 3-0 to the home team, if my maths is correct. It is, Matt. Sets it up nicely for the second half. Every chance and possibility that the away team can get back into this. Yeah, there's been encouraging signs there late on in the half. Um, but good, 
good defensively and obviously the great save from Aaron Rowe there which which keeps the score at three now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Will we'll be back after after the break for the second half. And we're underway for the second half. The wayside have it all to do here. I'm joined by my co-commentator for the second half, it's Nathan Foley. I'll be here and taking over the mic for this second half of the college development game. Thank you very much for having me. No oh, problem. What are, you, what are your thoughts for the second half? Nathan, oh, we might have a chance here. Oh my goodness, Aaron lost it and is a tapping. For the wayside, the perfect response. It is what can only be maybe described as a Robbie Howler from the keeper. Um, so which Tyler Richardson has capitalised on this mistake. Yeah, it was a, it was a great response to the, to the team talk, which no doubt Courtney Sterling and Patrick Queen will have got into the lads over half time. Tyler Richardson. And Tyler, great. Great gambling at the end there. Picks up on the mistake from the keeper, taps it in. 3 1 to the home side. But here they are again. I suppose as well that's a product of when you just don't give up chasing and pressing. Um, and Tyler's been greatly rewarded with with a goal there. Yeah, it's a 1 in 10. They don't often happen, but you've got to make those runs for, for the one opportunity they do. And, and that was his here today. Mike Thompson with the ball in midfield. Nice clearance by Aidan Oliver there. Max Roberts with the head. Alan Forster knocks it forward. Liam Woodley Lovely touch, touch in the middle of the half by Woody. Clear oh. edge off oh. the ball and a foul's been given by the referee for a shove in the back. Nate, what do you think uh, Patrick and Courtney will have said at half time? 3 0 down, it's obviously a big game. What? What would he have said to him? I think a lot of the emphasis will have been on motivation there. Um, I think I think he'll have really tried to rattle. They'll have really tried to rally the rally the team and, and just let them know that the tie's not over yet and and there is still there is still space in this game for a comeback and that's been apparent as the second half has unfolded. Yeah, first mate, great turnaround to make it three one and. Uh, and they could be still within a chance of picking up that, that trophy here today. Plenty of time left in this game. Ball's tracked. The, uh, the channel won great pace. And by the way, he's slipped on the turf and clears it away. Alex Stim, Nathan Bradley, right over it, and it's an away throwing down here on the, the near side. Seems to be getting a little bit more of a heated atmosphere as the competition um, to, uh, for the development Reds to either extend their lead or, or the development blue to, to come back into this seems to be all too too apparent and I think that there is some pressure being being applied on the development Reds here. Yeah, I think that goal was certainly given the, the wayside the, the little boost that they need and maybe it's a little bit of a shock to the system for the home team and maybe that could uh, wake them up to... Not only hold on to this lead, but move forward and make it um, more solidified. Harley Rolfe with the throwing. Long looking for the flick on by Liam Wood. And it is cleared by Aidan Oliver out for a development blue throw. Yeah, this is Patrick's, I want to say, fifth or sixth varsity now, and uh, his experienced head in the in the technical area um, will be greatly valued by by the development blue team. <coughs> Callum Forster up to take it, surveying his options. Liam Wood seems to be calling for it up the top of the pitch and Callum's on to find him, but well, that's been intercepted by John Cullingworth. Liam wins the ball back and it's gone out to Matt Thompson who was fed a sublime pass through. Holly Rolfe looking up. Cuts it back. Edge of the box, where are the runners? And it's just oh, and easily cleared. 
And the ball's out for development red right throw. Unbreaking play here. It looks like Ben Martin's game is over. It appears James Carter is getting ready to come on and, and replace Ben Barton here. Uh, James Carter currently a second year with us. Um, experience of playing um, within the college development team. Yeah, that's what they need maybe in this in this second half. Three one up at this point. A steady head at the back. <coughs> Just keep it steady, keep it tight for the next five or ten years and uh, maintain that that three one advantage. We were game play here. Red thrown on the far side. Throw down the line. Cameron's in behind, is he getting tucked back? Uh, he is, says Ben Thompson, and it will be a free kick, edge of the box. Great opportunity for this Nave to swing the ball into the box, get bodies in there. Definitely, I'd be looking to get a right-footed player on this to really get that ball swung deep into the penalty area and hopefully connecting with, over the ball. with an offensive player in there. Bodies in the box, who can he pick out? Might have overcooked that slightly. Oh, unlucky. And it's gone for a goal kick. Certainly a little bit more bite in the second half, mate. Definitely, and, and it's good to see because it definitely adds fuel to the competition. Ball cut out there by Aiden Oliver, and that's gone out for a development blue throw. And again, well cut out. Ref has blown his whistle. A little shove in the back. Any standout memories for you, varsity-wise, Nathan? Yeah, due to COVID, this is only my third varsity, and, and I'd have to say the first one I involved in, the magnitude of the occasion, just just a special day. Um, and I believe we ran out victors in, in both games that year. So yeah, it was a nice it was a nice experience. There. Colin Forster, he'll, he's nowhere, no strangers to varsity scoring last year. An absolute screamer in front of the away fans last year. It was a wonderful strike. Goes down there. <coughs> a little flick on it breaks into the centre of the pit. And all the plays over the top. Cameron Roberts, Cameron Roberts looking to latch onto that now when Cameron started. Tries to pick out in the middle, hits the post, comes back to Cameron and it's broken. When Cameron started with us, he, he had suffered a broken leg, so he spent the first few months of, of college within a pot. But since he's worked his way back to fitness, he's, he's played both in the second team and with the developments. And, and as, he, as he does continue to strengthen that leg, it does look to be very promising going into next year and as he hopes to become more of a second team regular. Very technical player. I've seen him in training, and um, there's nothing he can't do. It's just building that consistency to hopefully see him progress into potentially the first team next year. Got a development blue throw here in the opposition's half. Options on. Another Roll to Wood. Definitely uh, spice this up for the last. Oh, absolutely! Nice. Taylor Watson Fisher plays it out. Lovely so interception by Kieran Edson there. I believe that might have hit a hand. George Barrett plays it out on the halfway line. The Reds look to break away. To throw in behind. Cameron Roberts clips it inside. Lovely out there. And he again, quickly surveying his area to look where to plan that goal kick. Um, and wins it. Brilliant. However, the referee has pulled back here for a push. And it has gone to the development blue side. I'd like to say a special thanks to our cameraman Chris today, who stood valiantly over the camera and, and filmed all our varsity games. He he's not missed a moment of the action, uh, and for the guys to be able to walk away with this as a college memory is hugely appreciated. Ooh. Ball played forward from Halley Rolf. It breaks in the box. Could have bounced anywhere. And Aaron Rowe claims onto it. Just starting to slow the game down. Experience. I know it's down in the box. Um, 
Kyle Croft seems to be getting a bit tense with, with pacing around his technical area. Um, if he had any hair, he'd be pulling it out. This oh. Red and White's break away with the ball. Plays it inside. Out wide, great switch of play. Mike Thompson's like slowing down. Shots away. Uh, shot by Kenzie Messon. <coughs> Nathan works to win it. Liam Wood picks the ball up. Aaron Rowe collects. Surveying, ready to play the ball out. I noticed Liam Wood been alert to, to the back line there, um, just checking his way across and making sure that there are options that are cutting to the supply line off in the hopes of a counter attack. Yeah, he's playing on the shoulder, and I think that's, that's maybe the best method to get back into this game. Just that one ball in behind, they've had a bit of luck, and it maybe uh, it's just that one chance that they need to bring this game to 3 2 and really spice up this affair. Absolutely. That's a lovely ball. Unbelievable. Can he get the touch? It's just got, just got away from him. But again, great positioning from Kieran Edson um, out wide there with the hopes of, of capitalising on that lovely ball that was played through. Red and White's retained possession. Edson looks to play a ball in to Cameron Roberts. Gets the touch. What a save that is from Ryan no. Roberts. Can we just rewind, rewind from the save, although it was a fantastic save, can we just talk about the quality of ball that was played in there by Kieran Edson and for Cameron Roberts to then catch it on the full was absolutely phenomenal, but it was topped off with a miraculous and marvellous save from Ryan Rowe. For me, Nate, from a keeper's perspective, that is an unbelievable save. One-handed down to his right-hand side, strong hand, and he's up again quickly to claim the second. Unbelievable save. Nicely played out by George Sparrow, but the pass seems to go astray. Varsity first, I'm not sure it's been mentioned about the two brothers in goal, uh, I'm sure it has. Arrow with the booming kick, plays it in behind, Kieran Edison gambles. And it looks like it's going to roll away for a goal kick to the away side. Nathan, that opportunity there, could that have sealed the deal? Was that the, the defining save that maybe could change this game? I believe so. I think that would have been would have been uh, the the chance to kind of put this put this game to bed for for the Reds. Um, but again, it hasn't, and and they keep going and they keep going in search for another for another. They don't seem to be giving up at all. Kieran Edson with a brilliant header that's turned into a lovely through ball for Cameron Roberts who has latched onto it but the ball has run out for a corner oh he's kept it in he's kept it in fantastic battling by the pair then yeah tireless work and that means that the away side get a, a difficult throw in their own corner and uh, can pin them in there's some movement from the bench here. Courtney Sterling and Patrick Queens are making a triple substitution. Must have seen something that uh, that we haven't and, and handing out these opportunities. Um, but they are fresh legs. Mitchell Wilson coming on, who has played up front numerous times for the second team this year. Uh, since joining the college a little bit later, um, the other two players coming on, Wilson, Craig Noble. Dawson and Alex Noble, again have been regular development players throughout the time here. Uh, this will be the last time Alex Noble plays for the college uh, in any shape or form. Absolutely. Shot by Ryan Henshaw, well collected by Ryan Rowe. He's had a good game, Ryan Rowe, hasn't he? Definitely coming to, come to his own this half. He, the nerves have settled and... Jamie White underneath yeah. the ball here. Goes well, uses his frame, heads it away and it looks like it's going to go away for a throw-in the away side nicely taken away by Jamie White there. nothing wrong with taking it to safety as the Wilbergs if in doubt get it out <laughs> been caught underneath it George Ballard 
but Matt Choppers mops, mops up. That's no with a touch. Oh, he spun his player. Brilliant move. Oh, he's got inside. That is fantastic bit of skill from Alex Noble. But the Reds are quick to break and counter. Yeah, Easily won back there by Callum Forster. And again, it's a bit like pinball at the minute. Oh, a swipe of the ball there. Renshaw looks to spin him behind. Finds the ball out wide. Kieran Edgerton making a dart and running to the box here. Roberts plays it in. Oh. Easily collected by Ryan Rowe there. Safe hands. It seems to be an increasing intensity here, Nath. I think the away side sense that something could happen here. No, absolutely. Oh, and cuts inside, takes the strike, and it flashes across Aaron Rowe's goal. I think he had that one covered. I believe so too, but again, nice strike nonetheless. Yeah, cuts inside, and uh, maybe could have took it in a yard or two more, but uh, got the shot away, and uh, unfortunately, the away side doesn't. I'm <laughs> <laughs> with the goal kick. Strikes it, finds the halfway line. Nice battle. nice battle for the ball there. And again, good pressure. Woody with a beautiful ball out wide for Matt Thompson to get onto. As Matt Thompson drives. Very unlucky there. Very unlucky but well claimed by Aaron Rowe. Um, I don't think I've seen such claiming of of an object since I went to Gran Canaria back in 2013 and the luggage belt was sped up. Daniel Bessman looks to go to the ball there and just sees it out for a throw in. Big fan of the focus here today from both teams. They both seem tuned in and, and I believe it's, it's 100% um, bragging rights in the classroom come tomorrow. Been playing the right spirit so far, and um, yeah, certainly those who've found their way onto the, the score sheet will no doubt be letting everybody know about it. Beswick clears the ball, finds it inside, and that goes out for the wayside throw in. Lovely play inside, finds a striker, ball out wide, has it gone too far, he finds the cross, cuts it back, there's an opportunity here for a strike, and cleared away, well, well cleared, oh my the referee has given a penalty here, uh, I'm not quite sure what what for from, from our vantage point, but the referee seems to be causing a bit of a storm, this could certainly change the game upside down, um, I believe there's a big call for Liam Wood to take this penalty, um, and sign off from his from his college career with. Here we go. Yeah, the number nine. Yeah, number the nine has the ball. I didn't see it this myself. is a big moment. All the students really, really want to see this come off. Um, nice composure from from Liam here, uh, and we hope. Brilliant goal! Great strike and a lovely peeled off celebration. And that really, really changes this game. 3 2. Liam Wood from the penalty spot with, with time to go here. This could easily um, go to penalties. Yeah, I didn't see the I didn't see the situation, but no doubt Ben on the field there, <coughs> eagle eye, must have seen it hit a hand. But here we go, the away side again really coming back here. Yeah, very much so. 
That was a cracking penalty. Um, kind of placed in an unsavable. Yeah, hit it with moment. Yeah, definitely. And you can see from the gantry up here that Liam Wood just cannot stop smiling. Yeah, making dreams happen. Good time to go in this game, Nate. How do you see it going? To the away side. Fully believe that the away side can get themselves back into this now. I think that really has swung the momentum. Literally is the game of two halves. For example, we've got strikers now tracking back, forming that first line of defence. However, that is a very questionable shove in the back. It looked one like one from up here, but who are we to argue with a very experienced referee yeah. in Ben Thompson? Rumour has it that Ben Thompson was up at 4am this morning polishing his Copa Monday Owls uh, in preparation for today's event uh, and apparently he also applies the same shoe polish to his cards to give them a nice shine if he does have to get them out in, in any form of yeah, uh, bookings or sending offs. Uh, in a good spirit today, no, no cards have been seen but in the last 10 minutes this could get tasty. Home side with the ball. Was he offside there? No. Nope. And James Carr clears it away. It's, uh, it's interesting going back to the referee. You can see he clearly models his, uh, his refereeing style on his very good friend uh, Darren England. And, it, and it's great to see because the professionalism just really does shine through. Professional ref in the Premier League. There's no better person to, to look up to and learn off. Clips it in. Great the clearance. Face the edge of the box, and it's a wild swing with his left foot. That would have been brilliant if it was the Doncaster Dons playing at home, as he Kieran would have bagged himself three points there for a conversion. Two points, sorry. Three points. How many points is it for a conversion in rugby? Two or three. Three points. Oh, brilliantly caught out by George Spowett there. <laughs> Referee just dodging out of uh, the line of the ball there. Well cleared away by Jamie White. Well played. Here he is on the edge of the box. Can we get the shot off? No. It's held up. Oh, Harvey Rolf cuts inside, makes it one. And it was a late no, it is a free there. kick there. Another big opportunity for the away side to get back on level terms. Looks like Harvey Rolf wants it. I think he will. I think the goal is is very important here, and uh, I do think he's going to aim for it. This will be some strike if he gets in from here. I've seen him hit them in training. Good commanding by Aaron Rowe He's gone for the side foot. And again, a, a fantastic conversion by, by Harley Rolf. From that distance, Laces, make the keeper make a save. It could bounce to anybody. But unfortunately, for the away side, it goes over the bar and the home side can take possession. There's a bit of tinkering on the, uh, the bench here. Cameron shot. Smith about to make an appearance here. Yeah, big opportunity for Cameron. I'm sure he'll be looking forward to making an impact on this game. Yeah, definitely. And Cody Curran coming on for the home side. Jamie Sherman coming off. Work tirelessly. Afternoon. I'd say so. Um, he has 
uh, ran his socks off to be fair. Amro with a goal kick. Finds it way forward. It's gone through. Kieran Edgson. Kieran Edgson tried to cut in and it has bounced off and, and worked in his favour. Oh, I did look for the return pass but that didn't quite come off. The away side, great touch by Noble. Liam Wood, can he use his pace to get him behind? Nicely by tracked by James Carter all the way and that has gone out for the away side's throwing. Yeah, tried to put it in his right, and, uh, his right foot. James Carter was wise to it. Plays for a throw. Alex Noble inside the box. A good touch, Mitchell Wilson there, nice cut inside and again James Carter there to make that all important inception. Kieran Edson is looking up, has not quite made it. Definitely and I think you can attribute the tired legs to, to that, there's a lot of ground to cover here. And Mike Thompson plays it to Cameron Smith. They play work it together and the home side clear for a throw in just inside their half. It's a big throw in. Ball's loose in the centre of the field. It breaks out wide. Home seat at uh, home side. Breakaway. Kieran Edson again, and that is a fantastic ball. ball. Oh, it's just oh he should have outreached his leg there. Might have just made contact. Good there, and it just a shout out forward. to another staff member who who is making her way up the stairs after taking uh, Liam Rouse, who was playing in this game to hospital to A and E with an injury to meet his parent. Liam is okay. Uh, just a bit of a sprained collarbone, we think, at the moment. Great touch from the home side. Right. Mike Thompson breaks away with it. Clearance from Craig Dawson in the centre of the field there. He goes again first time. Oh, is that Aidan Oliver there? Kieran Edson, lovely position out wide. Callum Forster clears. Cody Curran, brilliantly met. Smith gets underneath it and Whoa. it's just gone away there for a home throw in. Might have took a bit of a bobble that ball then. Yeah. Or the wind. Oh, Lovely touch by he Cameron. He can Easily be. collected by Ryan Rowe there. Yeah, he's had an assured performance this afternoon, Nathan. Definitely, that is a fantastic flick on and it's a shame that there weren't players around him there to latch onto it because that was absolutely beautiful from the from the goal kick. Searching ball over the top, Kieran Edgson takes it down, can he get the shot off right foot, curls it, Ryan Rowe, touching it down, safe as you like, Harvey Roll flicks it on, Liam Wood, right foot. Looking for that through ball again but James Carter is there and equal to it. Great. Lovely. Open now. Home side come away with the ball. Daniel Beswick. Yeah. Knocks it forward. Just couldn't quite capitalise on that. Could Cameron Roberts. Nice. Ryan Henshaw, Cameron sorry. Smith. Linking play beautifully there. He's in behind. But it's open. Well, that's tracked down by Jamie White. Oh, he's cut inside, Nate. Here we go. He's Oh, he dinked it up for Liam Ward, but he's not tall enough. And what would it have been if that ball had been played across the floor, straight into the feet of Liam Wood there? We might have been on a different kind of reaction right now. Yeah, that would have really set us up nice for the last few minutes. Home side is trying to slow the game down here. They've got a throw in in their own half, edge of the box. Play. And it's just one there for a way throw in. It's a great ball. Kieran Edgerton is in. Kieran Edgerton has latched onto this. Edge of the box. Looks a dinky ball. Oh, and hits the crossbar. Potentially, but I think the panic was on from the pressing defender. He has unleashed a shot, and that was very, very unlucky not to find its way into the goal. Yeah, good strike. But the other options 
there, maybe take it in another five yards, one and one. Went for the Cantona-esque, little dink over the keeper, but that would have certainly sealed this game for the home side. Leaves the door open for the away side to, to press these last few minutes. And a new appearance for the day, the sunshine has decided to turn up now. Absolutely, adding to this what has been a fantastic day of sport, fantastic day of football, and that is a brilliant ball with the outside of the boot, but again, defenders were likewise to that. Matt Thompson has knocked it into space, but is the ball going to stop in time? It is. He looks up for the potential cross, whipped in. Oh, he's broken it. Oh. Liam Wood just couldn't quite capitalise on the rolling ball there. Yeah. He couldn't get his size 16s on that one. It appears that Kieran Edgerton has gone to play up top now alongside Cameron Roberts, which could be a great change because if he does get given another one of his chances... Yeah, using his pace in behind Nate, just playing on the shoulder of the defenders could be the, uh, the way that they get their next And he's on side and he's looking for the ball to be pulled back to him. Big tackle there. George Bauer, great tackle. No entry there. You shall not pass. But he's lost possession in the centre of the pitch. No foul, says Ben Thompson. Play on. Great ball, they're in behind here. Oh my god, the cutback's on. Here we go. Touch from Liam Wood. Can he finish? Oh my what god! What a fantastic what a save! save. Oh my god. Mitchell Wilson's there! What a finish to this game, Nathan! That is absolutely phenomenal! The highs and lows of football. And then he follows it up with the rebound. We're in for a barnstormer here, 3 all. Fantastic save made by Aaron Rowe, goal scorer Mitchell Wilson. Mitchell Wilson flies to the rebound. Unbelievable save there from Aaron Rowe. And this is set up to be an absolute Sorry? firecracker Hi. finish. Goal scored by Mitchell Wilson! Paggy. And Patrick Reece better? really have the wind in their sails here. It's 3-0 down at half time. This is this is Liverpool, Istanbul. Absolutely. Daniel Westwood with the ball. He's got it caught underneath his feet. Liam Wood presses him. Nice challenge there by Ben Barton. Breaks to the centre of the pitch for Mike Thompson. I wonder just how Courtney Sterling's feeling with, with this now his team's kind of coming back into it. He looks elated on the edge of the, uh, the technical area. Patrick Queen have done a, uh, a right job in the second half. An absolute. It even looks like Kyle Croft has gone to Craig to look for some, for some, for some knowledge of how to kind of navigate his way out of this um, he says that though, but packed home, ice. The home team look to press the issue here. Callum Forster says, you shall not pass. Liam Wood gets underneath it, looks for the switch across to Cameron Smith, just breaks into the centre of the pitch. Max Roberts shepherds it through, Ryan Rowe's there. Brilliant collection and bravery from Ryan Rowe there. Kicks out of his hands. Into the away team's half. The ball's loose. It's a foot race. He's in behind. Brilliant burst of pace there by Mitchell. The He's looking up again. Puts it back. Shane Carter's there. Harvey Roll didn't get the shout there. And, now the and again, they're on the break. He's looked up there. And Cameron Roberts is Great touch. He's about to go in. Tries to take on his namesake, Max Roberts. Breaks the edge of the box. Tyler on the left foot, swings it, and it's just not enough curl on it. I believe this could go to penalties. I think it's a straight penalty shoot out, Nathan, this day as it is. I think that will be full of elation for, for one team, obviously, but um, it would be a great experience for, for the gents. And, and it has, that is go. full time. We've already seen penalties we go. This is where the managers have to make some crucial decisions here on on just what's right and, and it goes down to how well they know their team, I think. Yeah. Comes up 
comes down to who can hold their nerve. All eyes on them. There's some tired legs out there. But you must say, the away side must have the wind in the sails and are probably feeling more confident going into this. Absolutely, I think I think come, coming this half they've really come into their own and, and the momentum has shifted. Yeah, we've seen uh, Ryan Rose penalty heroics in the Christmas Cup. Will he be able to do the same here today? It'd be good. Party? I'd like to think so. It'd be great to see a lot of second years take the penalties, given though it's their uh, the last time on the pitch. It looks like they'll be taking him the, uh, in front of the Black Bank here today. Two captains there, Max Roberts and Aaron Rowe. This is the kind of thing Ben Thompson Ben Thompson loves uh, a penalty shootout. Supporters look like they're up for this as well. Can the referee please make sure they clarify just how many penalties will be taken this game? Um, three or five. Again, I'll bring it back to the Battle of the Rows. We've got Aaron Rowe and Ryan Rowe in the nets here. Do you think they'll want to take a penalty themselves? I think if it comes down to it, I, I can't see why not. We've got some of the first team players who've stayed to watch this game. Fantastic attitude that from the first team players um, returning, returning the favour that, that these guys who are playing now have been here all day to watch them and and have waited it eagerly for their opportunity on the pitch. Have you ever had to take a penalty knife in a big game, cup final? Has it been given that pressure? Uh, taking a couple of uh, Sunday league, but that's about as far as it goes on, on my penalty journey. What do you think will be going through the heads at this time? Will it hit the back of the net? Will I let my team down or will I contribute to my team's success I think it is a doesn't matter what kind of occasion um, or what kind of level I think a penalty shootout always does have that same same kind of emotional attachment yeah. what was your approach was it stick to making very much stick to yeah very much I, I'm a big believer in in the bottom corners um, placement over power um, Purely because I believe that that gives you the better the better chance of, of finding the back of the net. Yeah, flipping it onto the keepers, I think it's a great opportunity to become a hero today. Any save in a penalty shootout. Oh, making it's sure it. them fingertips are well stretched out, ready. Even if they can change the flight of the ball by by a tenth of an inch, it could be the difference between it hitting the post or or hitting the back of the net. Here we go. It looks like the teams are ready and the ref is ready. Aaron Rowe donning the goal for the first penalty. Which cleaning means, his boots there, making sure he's got good foot placement. Yeah, which means we've got the away side to take first. Is that Matty Thompson stepping up, stepping up first, Nate? Absolutely is. Matty Thompson, like second, second team experience throughout the year as well. Go, up. Nice, slowed down. Oh, brilliant. Aaron Rowe got a hand to it. Did guess the right direction there as well. But as you say, bottom corners, Nathan. He went for it and he found it. The wayside had the advantage. Increase the travel time of that football. Sorry, increase the time it has to take the keeper to get down to it. Here we go, the home side. Aidan right, Oliver up to take first. Strikes it. It's Brilliant a penalty. penalty. Beautiful penalty. He finds that bottom corner. Sends Aaron, uh, Ryan Rowe the wrong way. And clearly his goal scoring has given him the confidence to, to te step up to the spot again. Yeah. Um, Liam Wood second up. One all on penalties. Here we have Liam Wood. Rest ready. Edge of the box. Run up. Side foot, it Again, brilliant penalty. No chance there. Left the keeper standing. Yeah. Runs away with <coughs> one arm in the air. Alan Shearer-esque, I would say. 
A great day and a round off uh, the college experience for Liam Wood. Home side look to get back on level terms. We've got Cody Curran here. Like he's going to strike it with his right foot. Again, oh. brilliant penalty. These bottom corners seem to be a, a player favourite today. Yeah, a little stutter in his run up. Sees the keeper go and he drops it in the other side. We're on level terms. Harley Rolf. Oh, Rolf straight down the middle and it has gone over the bar. Aaron Rowe gets his foot to it. It clips up just over the bar. And that's a I don't know if there was a bit of a, a stumble there in, in Harley's run up and he's caught a bit of the floor when he's made contact yeah. with the ball. Home side. And oh, he hits it low. I thought Ryan might have got a, a touch on that. I he believe he did. Two and two is the call from Kyle Croft. Can he make that happen? Is that Taylor Watson Fisher? Absolutely. And Rowe looks pumped for this one. He steps up. It's a great Brilliant penalty. penalty. Solid side foot. Aaron elected to stand in the middle. Kenzie Messon stepping up here. Everyone knows Kenzie Messon throughout the season at college has scored some absolute thunderbolts uh, and screamers. So here we go. Steps up. Oh, he nicely found. Found the corner there. This is Ethan McGee stepping up now. Ethan again is another second year, being an integral part of the second team squad and has had first team experience. Yeah, if he misses here, Nate, I think it's all over. Left footed. Finds the bottom. Brilliant penalty. penalty. Is this the fifth penalty? This is it. This is it. It's all down on John Cullingworth's shoulders, I believe. Forced to seal it. Left-footed. Brilliant hey. penalty, and that seals it, and the development Reds have won the game. Absolute jubilations down at the bottom of the pitch. Yeah, Kyle Croft will be very happy with his players today. Brilliant. Obviously, and nice to time. see... Nice. Go on, sorry, my friend. And nice to see uh, Kyle and the opposing manager, Courtney, having, having that time together there. Yeah, the home side, it literally was a game of two halves. 3-0 up. They were... Uh, been disappointed to see themselves pegged back to three all, but finishing on a penalty shootout is a great way to, to win the game. Absolutely, and it rounds off a great day of football. Um, and as from us up in the gantry, I believe that's that's kind of good afternoon and farewell from us as we sign off on what, as I say, has been a successful Varsity 2022. Yeah, thanks very much, everybody. See you soon.